one. Part, part two. two. Episode 108. Yay. I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Wendy. And I am sporting my lovely scrubs. <laughs> and I'm sporting my lovely gym clothes, which I am disguising with this scarf. I'm not disguising anything. <laughs> I'm comfortable. And my, oh, we already gave our names. I was gonna give it again. You can do <laughs> that. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, uh, we are still doing our baby child knit along until May 31st. So if you haven't participated in that, you can look at the thread in our group, which is that way. Over so there. The link to our the group link to our group. If you're watching us on the blog, you can link there. Otherwise, just go to the Knit One Heart Two group. And click join, and you can be a member of the group. Yeah. Um, Sheila is going first this week. So I am currently knitting the Wonderful Wallaby. That's right. The Wonderful Wallaby, a hooded sweater for all ages. And it is by Cottage Creations. And I want to thank Diane from Knittables for giving me a copy of her this book. So this is the second time I'm knitting this. I'm just going to show the pattern, sort of. So what I did is... Um, if you watched the show before, she made this pattern also for her son. Yeah. So I'm going to show, I don't think that would be breaking copyright law because I'm not yeah. giving. So this is what the first page looks like, and it tells you all the different sizes. This is what the pattern basically looks like. There's no pictures, just drawings. It's really cute, but it's basic. Gives you some ideas on how to. It's like a pouched hoodie. Gives you some ideas on how to um, make it your own. Uh, graphics on how to do the pocket. So yeah, it's a knitted hoodie, and this is what I'm doing. It I'm transferring needles right now because I started on uh, too long of needles where I was doing basically the magic loop method. Yeah, and it was making you crazy. Not really. It's just I need to change it. So I am doing it in knit picks. So I probably don't have one single. I don't have one comfy? single band. No, it's not comfy. Swish might be swish. It's a merino wool blend. Might be swish. Cotton. I think it's swish. Um, my friend Tara gave us this yarn. I was supposed to give it away. I didn't give it away. <laughs> Sorry, Tara. Um, it's been sitting in my stash. So I'm doing it out of that, which is, it's a black tan and cream. Yeah, pretty. Um, so the black, I think I only... The darker tan, I only have two skeins worth, so I'm trying to do most of the sweater in cream. Right. And a black sweater for a toddler, basically, I'm doing. It's a little I think, weird. I think I'm doing age three. It's a little dark. So what I'm planning on doing is the sleeves. I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing with the black cuff and some striping. Some striping. And um, I think the pocket might be all black. I haven't figured out yet what I'm going to do with the pocket. Yeah, that might look nice. <clears throat> and then add, so I might do the pocket all black and then add some of the lighter color stripes to it. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I am not planning on doing a hood. Although he was wearing a hood yesterday. I saw him yesterday. Aww, I missed him. He is a little over a year old. He's adorable. He's so stinking cute. He's walking holding hands. Oh, wait, this isn't for Tara's kids. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> this is for someone else's kids. No, I should probably make it for her kids. Um, anyway, so what I did so far is when I came up to the point where I figured I was going to do the pocket, start the part pocket, I actually strung some of my Wilmize yarn, so that little stripe right there yeah. is where the pocket's going to start. Okay, so I'll pick it up with the needle and go from there. Um, it's on US size 6. You're supposed to do the cuff one size and then the quiet, please. All right, fine. Go back out. Go back out. Go back out. Uh, I want you back in a half hour. Sorry, kids are home this week. Yeah, it's school holiday here. They had to give me some mail. Um, <laughs> so what was I talking about? The pocket. The pocket. You're going to pick it up. Oh. So you're supposed to do the ribbing in a size smaller needle and yeah. then do the the rest of it in a larger needle. Um, I started this at work and I had one needle. So I just made do and I actually I like it. It's a good I think it's a good I gauge. It, yeah, I think it's a good gauge. And I saw him yesterday and I think this will fit him nicely come fall. It will probably be too big, but they'll get a lot of wear of it. Right, that's good. So uh, that's all I have on the needles. 
Oh. The fact that I have something else on the needles. I'm has impressed been that you have something new on the needles, I have to say. <laughs> I'm impressed too. I thought we were going to be looking at that shawl for a while. Yeah, I know. Um, so I have two, everything that I have on the needles that is not a project of shame is new this week. So yeah. that's pretty, pretty exciting. That <laughs> is exciting. I know. I, know just I can tell you're so excited. So the first thing, I have been talking about this, so I know that um, if you watch the show before, you will have heard of it. I am knitting Trillion by Martina Bem, which is available for about $3.95 on Ravelry. Out of Highland Handmaid's Man in Black colorway, uh, which was on her Superwash Merino, Merino Silk Base, I spun it into a two-ply. And this is what I have so far. I like it. I love... Now, about the way that I spun this, I spun this so that it would stripe like this um, by dividing the braid in half and um, plying it together so that the colors would kind of march with each other. So... Um, and it's going to, you can see how it's starting to go back to blue again, right where I'm knitting. Because it was dyed to, what do you call it? Grady? Mirror. Oh, so mirror. it goes from black to blue to black to white to black to blue. It, like, and it'll go back. So um, you can see we've got the black, gray, black gray black and now there's going to be some blue coming in but it's going to be a little it won't look as good as the first one because the colors didn't march as well together towards the end of the skein just because you know like you can it's hard to be accurate in splitting uh braid in half like that so mm. um, but i really like how it's knitting up the only thing i'm not happy about this is supposed to be knit in fingering weight yarn and my yarn is more of a sport weight and in a few places, because I'm not that consistent a spinner, it is worsted weight. Oh. So um, it was meant to be knit on a US 2.5 millimeter needle. I went up to a US 4, and I'm wishing now I had gone up to a US 6. It looks a little dense. It's a little dense. It's it's not... I mean, it, it depends on where you are in the thing. Here... When I started, it had this nice drape to it. So I was like, okay, I'm really happy with it. Here in the middle is where my spinning was a little heavier. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had gone up to a six. But by the time I got to that point, I had already knit this much. And I'm not going backwards. It's still going to be a beautiful scarf. It'll be nice and warm. It just won't be as drapey as I planned. But I'm okay with that. Okay. So this is, it's really pretty. It's a nice edging. This I love the unusual construction. I am knitting along this edge and increasing, and eventually when I get to a certain point, I will just knit an, an, a similar edging to the one on the side down this side of the, um, of the shawl. So um, it'll have this edging on two sides, and it will be a really long, you know, more like a scarf. And I think that I just love how the striping came out. I'm really excited to see. I have the second skein of yarn here. And as you can see from looking at it, it did a lot more um, barber pulling than my original skein. So I'm really interested to see the two halves and how different they are. Excuse me. I'm sorry. And um, see how that looks. Well, that'll be exciting. Yeah. So I've enjoyed this. This is very relaxing. It's mostly knitting. It's mindless. And I'm knitting it on my size 4 signatures, which makes it even more better. So that's that. Um, the second thing that's on the needles this week is the Chicken Viking Hat by Sarah Mundy. And I'm knitting it out of Barocco Vintage Worsted in sort of a multicolor brown colorway. Um, the only problem is I wanted to go down a size... <coughs> So I stayed with the same size needle, and I decreased the um, width of the brim. Bless you. Something. You're allergic to probably the cats. Something got up my nose. Oh. No, meaning allergy-wise, I don't know what. Well, there was a really high tree allergy alert today that I got alerted to my phone, so it could have to do with that. 
Yeah, Chimpa. I can tell it's something like that, but I, I thought, you know, sometimes yarn, if it's been sitting around, but I've been using this. So. Well, but I'm sitting next to you, and, and my cat played on this when I was blocking it, so maybe you got it on Ollie fur. Anyway, um, I was saying, I went down a needle size, and I was supposed to go up one size from the needle I started with on the top of the hat, and I wish that I had, because I this is not going to be it's enough tiny. length. It's not enough length. So I'm going to have to rip back and either knit a little bit more before I start. I think what I probably will do is just knit like another inch yeah. before I do the um, decreases. But you can see it's meant to look like bumpy chicken skin. <laughs> it's going to be super cute. Yeah, it's super cute. So, um, yeah, I'm sad that I have to rip that out. But since I'm basically rewriting the pattern for a smaller size, this is the kind of thing that happens to you. And, um, no biggie. It took me about, um, two hours to knit this, so it's, it's not like it's going to be a, ch a pain to redo it. So hopefully you'll see the cl finished hat or close to the finished hat. I am going to make one modification in the pattern. Um, the little chicken legs that go on the sides <laughs> have chicken feet. And because this is supposed to be a roast turkey, I'm going to knit a little bone so that you can tell that it's. A, turkey, a, a roast a turkey and not like a naked chicken head. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my plan. But anyway, that's all I have on the needles right now, not including my several projects of shame. Rate your date? I have a date to rate. I have a date Yay! to rate. Yay! It. It's only been, what, <laughs> two, three months? I, I am no so idea. excited. So I finally finished my Iris Goddess of Rainbow Shawl. In the Zenzi Warm Eyes colorway. I really like this. So I blocked it. I blocked it hard as much as I could, and I think it came out really well. I love it. Um, it really came out nice. I did this on US size six. I didn't do any of the binding off that it recommended. I just bound off in the super jetty. Yeah. Like, it could do a, a, a double yarn over. I'm not a big holy. Thing yeah, and so I just bound it off. This is, I think, is what I did when I bound my. I think I, the original one, yeah. So this is what it looks like. Um, I like it. I like this area right up here. Stitch in the front. I like this area too. Like I, I could do a, really a shawl with this here. Do the seat stitch and then maybe this at the edge again. I think I that would look really pretty. Or a shawl that had like stripes of this with a thinner stripe in between, like several stripes. Like this would be really pretty too. Mm -hmm. It's just a it's really, really pretty with. stitch. Yeah. So, I finally finished it. Um, this will go in the bin. You not going to keep it? Probably not. I think it's so pretty. Probably not. Um, I really like it. It matches Sheila's outfit today. Yeah, I'm wearing brown today. Brown and blue. Pretty. It's one of my favorite Good job. Yeah. It smells so. good, too. Did you use S? I use... What do I use? Um, <laughs> Escalade is what I... No. <laughs> I know that's not right. That's a car. Eucalyn. Eucalyn. Eucalyn and the lavender. <laughs> Escalade. Escalade. Starts with an E. <laughs> so I kind of blocked this haphazardly and very rushed because I was doing it in the middle of dinner. Actually came out pretty evenly. Yeah, I really like it. So this is my finished project. Uh, it was Yay. by Natasha Vogel, Crazy Kitty, Kitty Knits, and it will probably go into the bin for a gift. I haven't woven the ends. Yeah, I haven't woven the ends on my project yet either. So, that's it. Um, I How have two dates to rate, because I'm amazing. It's good that one of us is. Hey, I'm amazing <laughs> in another place, yes, and you I'll, are. I'll explain that later. I'm totally kidding. You're way more amazing than me. I never would try to claim that. Um, so, the first thing I'm wearing, you saw this last week, so it doesn't really count as an FO, but I did finally block it, and you can see from looking at it, it the gorgeous. difference that blocking made from, if you watched the show last week, when it was unblocked, so if you will just assist me, my lovely assistant, that Fine. is how it looks gorgeous. when it's blocked. I love it. I am so happy with it. Yeah. Um, it's a nice, big shawl. If you like to wear your shawls like this. Yeah, it is a nice big one. It's nice. And you can, um, I had it on before where I drape one side. It's got these lovely curves, which really just keep it on you. And you can just drape it. Um, and maybe if you want to feel more secure, put a shawl pin on it. But it drapes really nicely. 
and it's warm and I think it came out gorge. And this kind of a shawl, this shape of a shawl would be a really good shawl to use flexible wires like the Infinity oh, wires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually didn't bother to use the Infinity wires last night because they were inaccessible to me and it would have taken me like 25 minutes to get them out. But um I did pin out, I had to pin out every point, but if I had used the Infinity wires, I could have blocked out these points by just threading the um the wires through. And um, I could have used them to really get a nice a nice curve. I did the best that I could with pins, but um, this shape of a shawl really that's where you really want some flexible mm. blocking wires. So yeah, I love it. I'm very happy with it. And now I have my own since my mom has oh, my right. black and white one. <laughs> so yeah, that's in the pink by Izzy Knits. It's free on Ravelry. Um, I think it's a very easy lace pattern. Um, the only thing that's difficult about it, and I've said this before, is that you knit the center circle medallion, and then you knit the two crescent medallions, and then you join everything together and knit these little triangles in between the two, and then you knit the full edging on. And um, assembling this shawl is, it's complicated, and um, I've recommended to everyone I think this would be a great starter lace project in terms of the medallions are really easy to do. The instructions are easy. Um, I recommend that if you do take on this project, you use the um, stitch markers as recommended because um, you will get into yourself into a world of trouble if you don't. And I recommend that if you are not comfortable <clears throat> with um, grafting, stitches together that um, this is probably not the project for you because there is a lot of grafting in order to join it. You know what I would think would be a nice scarf but it might be something that would get boring is just this edging. If you were to just oh, knit know. that edging I think in a gradient, I think it would be gorgeous. I think that edging is so pretty. As like a skinny scarf. Yeah, I think it would be. I love it. It's one of my favorite edgings. So, now it's all lopsided but Anyway, um, yeah, it's a great pattern. Um, do take advantage of the diagram for assembly that somebody has um, done that the designer put on her pattern page. If you're a first-time knitter, it will definitely make your life much easier. Oh, yeah. So that's one. The second thing I have, I'm just going to refresh your memory. As you know, my sister-in-law is having a baby. So I have knit pumpkin hat for October. And I had knit the bunny hat for Easter, and I just finished the oh, how cute. Christmas tree hat for Christmas. That's so cute. It came out super cute. Um, I did French knot embroidery of the little, um, using worsted weight. Ornaments. Like, yeah. Um, you could really get fancy and decorate this with little buttons or something, but because it's going on a baby... Mm -hmm. Even though the baby's going to be so little, they really can't do anything at three months. I just feel like first-time parents, which is what my sister and brother-in-law are going to be, um, are probably going to be more comfortable right. with it. And I didn't do anything fancy with the finish. I just knotted the um, knots behind because this is not going to be a heavily worn object. Um, and then I made a little pom-pom to represent the star. Some people have knit up little... Stars, stars, but I kind of like the pom pom like the aspect of it, and I think it came out really cute. I did have to rewrite the pattern to get it to be the right size, um, and I will put the rewritten measurements. This hat pattern is free. It is by Patty Pierce Stone in Verhoeven Vintage Vintage DK. It is supposed to be knit on much smaller needles. I knit it on US five, and I knit it for a larger size. So I'm going to put my mods on my pattern page in case anybody is interested in knitting this in a three to six month size, which is what this is. So I have the three hats and the one that I'm still working on is this one, which I'm going to have to rip out. So that's my two FOs for this week. Oh, good. And yeah, I was a busy girl. Um, whirlwind Romance. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> you know, if you did, that would be so amazing. I don't have anything new to show I'm you. I'm lucky week. I have knitting. Are you kidding? <laughs> I know. 
I know. I have nothing new this week, so there's nothing nothing on the spinning front. Um, I did have spinning um, guild last night, and I was too exhausted to go because of this week. Oh. So um, it's got nothing to show you. I was hoping I was going to have something. Uh, future dates. Future dates. Let's see. I'm working on the sweater now. Um, probably another scarf, maybe. I want to do my silk. I want to use that silk that I have. Yeah. And maybe do a, a clap of tea with it, because I think that would be beautiful. And that would be for me. Um, for now, anyway. I would hope so. <laughs> for now. Uh, but other than that, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe, who knows, maybe another sweater. Something mindless. Yeah, I haven't, um, thought about what I'm going to do next. Because I have two new projects on the needles, but I'm kind of feeling in the lace mode again. And um, when I was deciding earlier whether I was going to do the um, shipwreck shawl with the beads, my other option was to do the seashell shawl from Yarn and Fiber Company. Mm. Um, and I have some beautiful silk, 100% silk lace yarn. And um, I think that might be my next project. Well, the other thing I was looking at is that trillion and maybe doing that um, ovarian oh, cancel yeah. with the trillion. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would be really pretty. Uh, that would probably be given away, too. But I, yeah. It would, it, was, it would be spun to be really pretty for that. It would be good striping. So I don't really have, like, a firm future date. Neither I guess we'll I. just see. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. We'll see where it goes. Um, crushes and heartbreaks. Uh, well, I have one little crush today that was kind of nice. Um, today, I had two days off and I worked my overnight shift. Um, and it's been school vacation, so I have been dead dog tired. But today I went to work. I have, we have, we do it by floors. And there's 30 some odd floors on each, 30 some odd rooms on each floor with two patients per room. Yeah. But we don't always do every room. Right. Or every person. So today I only had two drawers on my floor. Wow. But that means I help other people on their floors. And I, we have a new student with us. So I do my two drawers. One guy, they we were told that he can be very mean. So the nurse stayed with me and I'm like, he was nice. I didn't let the student do that because I'm like, that's not nice. Yeah. So the other one um, was fine. So we, we do our drawers. We go down and then uh, the two other girls that are with me said that they tried to get this one person and they couldn't get him. Yeah. This one person tried three times to get him and they couldn't get him. So I'm like, all right. I go up. I said, you know, he unfortunately is not with it mentally. Right. So, which is, I hate to say it, which is kind of better because if I had to search for veins while yeah, they're awake, that would not they get good. very agitated. So he, um, he wasn't awake. So I just, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go up. I'm going to take my time. I grabbed some heating packs, threw them on his hands. I was able to get his hand, and um, I was able to get what we needed plus, because we always grab a little extra in right, case they want to add. Case. And it just makes me so good to know that the person who's been drawing for f more years than I yeah, not couldn't get him, but you, I could. You have a skill, Sheila. And uh, everybody's like, he he has a sitter with him. And he's like, wow, that's good. You got him. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> but you know what it is? It was a hand draw, and I think this one person doesn't like hands. So she just Some people it. are better doing things than others, and I actually enjoy doing hands. I find it a challenge, maybe. Yeah. So, I, because I tend to look at hands. And I guess, I guess she probably no longer screams, don't look, don't look, when she sticks your hand. Do you remember? Oh, well, that was you. <laughs> that was when she was still in school. Well, it was funny because her instructor was, was other, like, "Don't do that." There was this other person who can be difficult sometimes, and uh, I didn't want the student doing it, not knowing that the student had already drawn her yesterday. Oh, but um, so she's like, "They hurt, they hurt." Do you know how much it hurts? And me and the student are like, "Yeah, we stick each other." Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, we know how much it hurts. Trust me. Yeah. And uh, she's like, "It really hurts." So of course, I'm trying to be really good and and, and something and. I was a little nervous taking it out, so when I was taking the needle out, I kind of shook a little, yeah. and the air went into the tubes. She might have felt that a little yeah. bit from her vein. I'm like, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, what she considers pain is probably nothing, but you just apologize. And then I felt bad. We were 
I had another draw for my floor and uh, I'm talking to the student and I'm like, you need to do this, you need to do that. And the guy in the other room's like, really? You need to do training at 6 a.m. in the morning? Is that really the best time to do it? I'm like, yes, yes it is. <laughs> what do you want me to say? It's the only time we're going to train. I know. Jeez. Because uh, if you can't, you have to do draws at a certain time of day. It's not well, like you can just. We draw them. We start our draws at 5.30 in the morning. And we do that so that the reports, because we do our own blood in our own lab, are ready for the doctors at 7.30, 8 o'clock when they yeah. do rounds and when they have their meetings. So there is a rhyme or reason for it. Yeah. Does it suck? Yeah. Are we the only ones who are waking those patients up at 5.30 in the morning? No. no. If I know any healthcare facility, they're getting woken up all the time. Exactly. It's like the, the worst place to try to get any sleep is in a medical facility. It, yeah, it's There's horrible. always somebody waking you up for some reason. But I'm like, whatever, buddy. Um, so this starts my six days in a row of this job. I went today. I go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and I picked up an extra day for a coworker. Have one day off. You're in the money. You're have one day off. Money. Go back on Friday. Have two days off. Oh, good. So you have the weekend next weekend, which will be if nice. I don't work the overnight shift because the heartbreak on the overnight shift. Yeah. I told you about my coworker who collapsed and they found uh, tumors in her brain. Stage four cancer. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, it really is. So unfortunately, my boss now has to find another overnight person. Which, never mind the fact that my coworkers got stage four cancer. I mean, that's, I'm not Horrible. belittling that in any means. Um, I didn't know her very well because obviously we never saw each other. You we were, were ships that passed in the night. Yeah. Because um, we worked the same shift. I never saw her. I don't, she was, she doesn't, she's got a father and a brother. She doesn't have any kids. She doesn't have any husband. So she's pretty much by herself. I feel yeah, bad. That's horrible. So my thoughts and wishes are out to her. Yeah. Um, and my boss will have to look for one or two more overnight people because I can't keep doing what I'm doing. No, you can't. Don't let her guilt you into doing it. No, but I will help out because too. this week I get paid for three days today. Three days last week I get my paycheck at Braintree Rehab and I get my state check. You're going to be so rich. Yeah, unfortunately, it's got to go right back out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> as soon as it comes in, it goes out. But it's good. But at least it's coming in. Exactly. You know what I mean? At least it's something coming in because I went out with my friend Courtney and it's not coming in for her. And unfortunately, they're paying out. Yeah, that's hard. That's a really tough situation. It is, so... But I think that's pretty much my crushes and heartbreaks. School um, kids have been home. You know? Yeah, it is vacation week here. I have three heartbreaks and no crushes this week. And I'm going to start with the big one first, which is um, the bombing at the Boston Marathon. I kind of want to dedicate just our show this week to all those victims. And the mm -hmm. reason why it's so close to me, if you follow our group at all, my husband's friend and colleague and his two-year-old son were involved in one of the blasts and the two-year-old is fine he suffered a skull fracture and I think he was released yesterday there was no other injury good so it was a fractured skull which is serious but there was no brain injury or tissue injury or and anything. he said he was bouncing off the bed he was yesterday. having fun at children's so. everybody was so relieved um I think the fact that he was being held up instead of sitting in his stroller is probably what um Limited oh. his injury. If he had been at a lower level, it probably would have okay. been very bad. Um, because a lot of the damage from the blast was waist level and below. Right. Unfortunately, his father, who is the one who's my husband's friend and colleague and somebody that um, we skied with. Oh. Um, is, uh, he lost his foot below the knee. His leg below the knee. Um, he had an amputation. So he is, I'm trying not to get emotional about this, um, he's a very athletic guy. And, um, he'll, do, he'll get back. He'll yeah. get back. It's actually good that he's athletic. Um, it will help his recovery. Um, he'll need a prosthesis. He is looking forward to at least six months to a year of rehab. And um, I mean, I'm sure that in his heart, he's just really grateful that his baby wasn't killed or injured or severely. Himself, that he gets to now see his he son gets grow to, up. So, you know, it could have been so much worse for them. They were standing right by the little boy that died, unfortunately. Uh, um, so he knows how um, close it bad it could have been. His, it, They were there to watch his wife, who was running in the marathon, and she fortunately was turned away before um, she wasn't anywhere near 
Oh, good. But she spent an agonizing couple of hours trying to figure out where her husband and son were, and he had to suffer seeing his child carried away by a police officer. And if you link in our group, there's a photograph of the police officer that rescued his son. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't see that. I linked it. Um, Was it recently? I don't remember. Oh. On Tuesday or Wednesday. He made it... There was a photograph. I, I'm not saying the names of the people involved because the family did ask everyone for privacy and um, they haven't released the names of the victims. Um, so I've been referring to them in the group by their initials because I know some people want to put them in a prayer chain, which I think is really highly appreciated. And um, But their son is did make the cover of the Time Report and there's a picture of him being carried away from the blast by a police officer, and there was a freelance photographer who took it who said that um, he saw the baby carriage overturned, the stroller overturned, and he yanked it up to see, and there was no baby, and that's when he saw the police officer running the baby away to the tents, and um, that the baby was just screaming. Um, And it does, there's a little blood on the side of his head. It's not a graphic photo, but um, I put a link instead of putting the actual picture in the thread because I didn't want anybody who doesn't want to see that kind of graphic image. And um, there's a series of photographs that this uh, freelance photographer took before he got too overwhelmed. I think there are five photos. And some of them are graphic. Did you take the one with the guy in the wheelchair? I don't think he took that one, but that was a horrible, horrible yes. photo. I unfortunately heard about the marathon on Twitter before it was on the news media and saw some graphic photos that I wish I hadn't seen because people were tweeting. I don't know why they do that. And I, of course, it didn't say graphic photo, so I was like, what? Click. Um, but anyway, I just want to say that my heart goes out to my friends and to every victim and victim's family in the um, in the blast. So that's one of my heartbreaks um and the other heartbreak is there was an explosion in Waco but where a bunch day. of people were killed and injured and my heart goes out to them as well that was a fertilizer plant wasn't it yes um that is no relation I don't think it was any relation no, no I think it, it was just to be a an fluke. accident and then I heard there's a sinkhole <laughs> there's this humongous sinkhole and I want to I don't know where but my co-worker said it told me today that there's this huge sinkhole. I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, um, my third heartbreak is that last night, my husband and I were sitting in our living room, and I got a tweet from a friend of mine who's in D.C. So, like, random tweet saying, are you guys all right? And when I looked on my Twitter feed, I realized that there was a shooting at MIT, and of an MIT police officer. And I told my husband, my husband's best friend's brother is an MIT police officer. So we were like, oh my God, we cannot possibly know two people in one week that get killed by crazy people. Um, So we went to the Boston Scanner Channel and we were listening as they eventually, we heard them throwing bombs. You could hear the bombs going off and guns. And we were like, oh my God, this is serious. And I said to my husband, if they have explosives, could they be related to the bombing people? <laughs> and it turned out this morning, yes, yes, they were related. It was the bombing people. Um, my husband is not at work. He is in, His company is in, in the lockdown area. There are five towns, I think, in lockdown, including the city of Boston. Um, in fact, I was a little nervous driving over here because at one point in time, they were looking for a gray Honda SCR, a gray Honda oh, CRV. Really? Yeah, the license plate. Yeah, different yeah, license plate than mine, but I was like, I don't want to get pulled over because I'm driving a gray CRV. Um, Which was weird because I wasn't even sure if I would be able to get home through Boston because yeah. I wasn't, they said I don't, that Boston was closed down, but 93 is open. It's just one of the, the side streets and one stuff. One of the bombing suspects is dead at this point. Um, they're still looking for the other guy. As of last I heard, which has been about an hour now, I haven't been paying attention to it because I came over here. Um, I just want to thank all the people that texted me and tweeted me and messaged me because they were worried about me. And um, I know that at least one person, one of my Twitter friends, lives in the lockdown area, so oh. I hope she's staying safe. Um, she's you know trapped in her house. She can't go anywhere. 
And um, I just really hope that they catch these people. Everybody who's involved, I don't know if it's just the two brothers or if there are more, but I just want them to be caught and I want them to be brought to justice so that on some minimal level they can understand the damage and the horror that they have caused everybody. And I also want to say that we later found out that the police officer that was killed at MIT was not my um, husband's friend's brother. So that was, I mean, I, my really heart goes out bad. to the family, but we were relieved that we didn't have another friend injured in this nightmare. Yeah. And I, I'm i so surprised that this is happening in Boston. It is a little surreal. It's surreal. It just doesn't, if Boston is such a little town, it's not like New York or Los Angeles or DC or DC or... where it's big. It's a really, it's, it's like a town. It's not really like a city. And, um, you just don't think of it being a target for angry people like that. Especially and, the marathon. Well, the marathon, I know it just, I don't know. So anyway, I don't even want to talk about it because anymore because <laughs> I'm going to get upset. But anyway, Yeah. My heart goes out to everybody. Everybody's in my thoughts and prayers. And every time I run this week, I am I am thinking every step of how hard it was for me to rehab my, my knee surgery and how much worse and longer and more devastating it's going to be for the people that survived with amputated limbs. I just... Mm. I just, I just respect those people and I have wish them well. And I'm so sorry that this had to happen. And I know. I wish that there was a way we could stop there from being hate like this. Because it doesn't fix anything to hurt people. So um, those are my three big heartbreaks. And my final minor heartbreak, for those of you who have been following the Vomageddon um, saga at my home, we made it 16 days it has now only been three days since the last vomit incident in my house. Um, my daughter was sick Monday night and Tuesday night. Aww. So I didn't sleep those two nights. <laughs> and I didn't sleep last night because we were up on the police scanner. That thing, I think it's kind of bad that you can listen to the police scanner on the internet. If I was like, if I was a criminal and I was in a manhunt, I would totally have my phone tuned into the police scanner. <laughs> like you can hear everything they're saying. Interesting. So, yeah. Um, sad week. That's all I have for crushes and heartbreak. What about him? I'm sorry? Can you call him? Yeah, but... He's outside somewhere. I don't know. Sorry. My brother's here. <laughs> and, and kids are around. My brother's here, and apparently one of the neighborhood kids wants to meet him and maybe his bike. I don't know. Yeah, my brother he has, has a, a motorcycle, motorcycle, so he's obviously I cool. have no idea. So Max comes in and says, can he see him? I'm like, yeah, he's outside somewhere. I don't know. Could have went for another ride. So we have one Bubbles and Bling this week. Many of you may know that I accidentally compelled Rachel from Diabolical to make perfume for everybody. <laughs> And for those who wanted them. For those who are. I don't know if it's going to become a business with her or not. You'll have to watch her blog to see. But she sent brown sugar fig. For me. And you can choose patchouli or euphoria. I'm going to have to smell them. Yeah, you can. <laughs> we can smell them right now. I didn't know. I'm them. not a, it'd probably be euphoria. I am not a patchouli fan at all. Yeah, my husband loves patchouli. Really? Maybe you can wear that. And... Uh-huh. I like my brown sugar fig. It smells so good. I'm not going to put it on because I'm going to try the other one first. Okay, there's patchouli. Uh, oh, no. And here is... Hmm, I kind of like it. It's not as strong as patchouli No, can be. it's not. It's but... subtler. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a good one. That's so girly. <laughs> My husband won't like this one, but I'm not a patchouli person. So, yeah, the euphoria is nice. I yeah, like the that. euphoria is very floral. It is floral. But in a, a nice, subtle A young floral. way, not in a, like, old lady way. Yeah. So, yeah, um, keep an eye on Diabolical website to see if she um, makes a go of this. She may not. Please don't harass her if she's not currently selling. 
It's so good. That one almost <laughs> smells like the beach a little bit, like suntan lotion almost. It smells so good. Ugh. The brown sugar and fig is so good. Um, but yeah, don't um, inundate Rachel Thank with you, Rachel. requests for perfume until she says that she is going to actually sell it. I feel bad. I like made her. But they're so good. The yeah. scents are so good. You can get all of these delicious scents in her soaps, though. She is selling that. Um, that's why I asked her for the brown sugar and fig because I have that in the soap and I don't want to use it. I'm using it now and I can't think of what, what I'm using. I'm using the square one that she gave me and I can't remember what that was. I can't either. But it was nice. It's nice. I love the brown sugar and fig soap. Now I can use the soap because I was just keeping it to smell because it smells so good because now I can wear the um, perfume. So yes, thank you, Rachel. You're awesome. You Rachel are. is one of the people that got in touch with me today to see if we were okay. Thank you. So um, that's it for Bobbles and Bling, Gossip and Innuendo. Um, I just want to remind everybody, Linda Sfern by Angelina Magar. Uh, you can still get that pattern for a dollar off by using the coupon code SHAWL3 until April 20th. Um, we also have a drawing that we're doing today. We did do a drawing before we recorded. Random number generator. Um, we had a thread for the Hugs and Kisses Socks pattern by Allison Ziegler. We did, we told people to post who they would um, knit for, and we got number, to post number 28 was Strickland66, also known as Michelle, and post number 9 was D. Rollin also known as Deborah. So um, Strickland66 and D. Rollin, I will be sending your names along to Allison so that she can send you a copy of the Hugs and Kisses Socks pattern. And um, we also still have a coupon code for that pattern and her other pattern, which is a um, cocoon style wrap for the baby. Or a, it's not really a wrap, like sleep a bag, sack? sleep sack, cocoon style sleep sack. You can use I Heart Babies, I H E A R T B A B I E S, all lowercase, to get 20% off of any of Allison's two patterns until um, April 30th. Oh, nice. So um, if you like those patterns, be sure to use the coupon codes before they expire. You got, I think, one more day on the um, Linda's Farn one, and another week or so on the, on the Hugs and Kisses and the other pattern by Allison Ziegler. So um, those are the main things. Um, I just want to remind people that upcoming events, Farm to Fiber Festival in Greenfield, Mass. is tomorrow, April 20th. Oh, all right. Um, so uh, that's a great place to go. They also call it the Little E. It's like oh, a smaller right. version of the Big E. I've never been to it. We're not planning to attend it, but it is something that if you live in the area, you might want to check out. And um, next weekend is the Gore Place Sheep Shearing Festival on April 27th, which is Saturday in Waltham. I have been to that event before. It's a great event. Um, it's a good family event, even if your people, your kids and husband or wife, if you're a male knitter, or significant other, if you're not married to somebody of the opposite sex. Um, it's a fun event for everybody because there are demonstrations. They have Civil War camp reenactment and tents and stuff. They have vendors. They have food. Um, they have sheep shearing. It's a lot of fun. So, And then you can go to the beautiful um, Gore Place in Waltham and just look at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, really yeah. nice. So that's fun. Um, get there early, though. Yeah, do get there early because parking is a nightmare. A difficulty. Um, and the other thing, um, next weekend is the Connecticut Sheep and Wool in Vernon, Connecticut, which is Saturday, April 27th. I just want to um, interrupt for a second. For anyone who may be going to that Gore Place sheep sharing, check the news first. They may end up canceling that. Yeah, you might want to double check. Just because it's a very public place well, Gore, in a situation. No. The yeah. one in Waltham. Yeah, but you never know. It's not. It's next weekend. Oh, next weekend? It's okay. not this weekend. I thought it was this weekend. No, but, you know, check anyway, because who knows if they will have caught that guy by then, and it's kind of so. close to the area where they're mm. shutting everything down. So um, we, we're going to try to go to Connecticut Sheep and Wall. I'm still planning on it. Um, if the weather is good, uh, we're really excited because our friend Jess Lou of Stitch by Jess Lou is vending there, and this is her first year vending there. 
So if you like Just Lou bags and you can go to Vernon, Connecticut next weekend, that is the place to see all of her product live. And of course, there are going to be a lot of other vendors and things Absolutely. there too. Um, that's just the one that I know of because I know her. So um, I think that's all we have for... <laughs> what? Uh, messaging. Oh, I see. Nothing important. Um, I think that's all we have for the week. Yep. So, um, our hearts. Ooh, I forgot the last thing. Um, people have been asking me where they can donate for my husband's oh. friend and family. And the best, there's no um, fund set aside for them at this point. I've heard that the company that my husband works for might create a fund. But the best place for anyone to donate for any of the victims of the um, Boston Marathon is onefund.org. Yeah. That is the official site that is being promoted by the governor and the mayor in um, Boston. Um, be very aware that a lot of scam mm. websites have come up and a lot of scam emails. OneFund.org is the official donation site, and you can donate by check or by PayPal on that website. And I will put a link to the um, OneFund to um, in the show notes so that if you're interested, you can use that. Sorry, I forgot to say that no, earlier. That's okay. Uh, so on that note, everybody have a good week. Thanks for watching. Our thoughts and prayers are out yes. for all the victims of um, the Boston Marathon and. And you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. And this giant sinkhole that I just heard about. Yeah, and apparently yeah. there's also an earthquake. I just feel like this week needs to end. Yeah. So um, have a good night, uh, week. Knit with, with heart. heart. Bye. Bye.